Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants freedom. Freedom of thought. Freedom to talk. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants freedom. Freedom of speech. Freedom to teach. Good evening once again to our dear viewers and listeners. I'm Anissa Batiste for the Thusian Institute for Religious Liberty and welcome to our program, The Rights of the People. Before we go into anything further, please bow with me for a word of prayer. Loving Father who art in heaven, do continue to grant us your Holy Spirit of truth that we may speak the truth to the people and nothing but the truth and that by these truths they might be enlightened about the need to defend their inalienable God-given rights and freedoms. These mercies I ask of thee, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, my dear viewers, let me remind you of how you may contact us at the Thusian Institute for Religious Liberty, if you so desire. You may send us an email at tirlsvg at first freedomthink.com. You may call us at 528-1015 or 432-5268. And for those of you who wish to support us financially, you may deposit your monies at our account in the NCB, the National Commercial Bank. The account number is 2, sorry, 129 Three five eight. I repeat, the account number at the NCB is one two nine three five eight. And we also want to thank those of you who have been supporting us. We are grateful for your support, so we may continue to bring this program to you. Before I actually go into the topic, let me also apologize for the um, inconsistent way in which our program has been coming over the last few weeks. There were some interruptions due to the cricket series that is taking place on SVG TV right now and as a result the program came a little later last Friday and there was a particular Friday where it didn't come at all. We apologize for any inconvenience but everything should be back on stream as soon as the cricket is over. This program that we are recording here now should be aired on Friday, that's Friday the 21st of May 2010 and it may be aired a little late due to the cricket as well. We um, appreciate your understanding and look forward to your cooperation with us, that you would look forward to this program even though it comes a little later, and that you would be enlightened thereby. And now, my dear people, let me alert you to the fact that in this evening's program, we will be continuing our discussion that we began in the last program that was aired, where we were looking at socialism exposed. However, in this evening's program, we want to pay particular attention to the Bicentennial Manifesto of Caracas, which we were able to get a hold of, which is a manifesto that was signed on April 19, 2010, in Caracas, in Venezuela, during an album meeting there. Now, the Thusian Institute for Religious Liberty is very concerned with some of the things that we have seen in this manifesto and with the declaration of this manifesto that ALBA and the member states of ALBA are going down the road to socialism and we are concerned about it as a human rights education services provider because we understand the negative impacts that socialism as a government ideology and practice has on the rights of the people. This is why it concerns us as a human rights education services provider. Let me make something clear at the outset. There are persons who claim that because we say we are Christians, we have no authority and we have no right to be speaking about political matters. You are wrong. The Bible itself shows us many examples of Christian people, of prophets of God, of men and women of God who spoke out against ills and evils and any wrong things that were taking place in their city or in their country by political leaders, whether it be by kings, kings governors, whether it be by leaders of churches and, and, and in, the, in the city. 
this is a practice that Christians have been shown to have in the Bible and one day I will bring an entire Bible study to prove that because you see my dear people the day we have the belief that Christians must not speak out against wrongs even in politics is the day we have the propagation or the continue, continuity of a lot of wrongs taking place in society because the very ones who are supposed to stand for high morals and stand for righteousness in the land are quiet and not saying anything. Well, we have decided that we cannot afford to keep silence because our consciences under God will not allow us to do it. It was, I think, the third president of the United States of America, Thomas Jefferson, who once said, and I quote, all that tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for men of good conscience to remain silent." End of quote. Here we see that he acknowledges that whenever men of good consciences, and I add, who to have better consciences but Christians, whenever men of good consciences or Christians stay silent, then tyranny gets a chance to gain a foothold. But when they do not stay silent and they speak out and they criticize and they rebuke the wrongs of those in leadership, then tyranny cannot gain a foothold. So my dear people, we have all rights and authority under God as Christian people who have interest and concern in the human rights situation of our country to be coming to you with such programs and exposing any wrongs that we see taking place in governments, whether it be the current administration or any other government to come that has the potential to impact negatively upon the rights and freedoms of the people which are inalienable or God-given. Having said that, we will continue our program on Socialism Exposed right now, looking in particular at the Bicentennial Manifesto of Caracas, which was signed on April 19, 2010 in Caracas. What is this manifesto, you ask? Well, my dear people, we are told that in April 19, 2010, in Venezuela, in the city of Caracas, all the countries that belong to ALBA, the Bolivarian Alliance, of the peoples of our America, that's what ALBA stands for, all the countries that belong to this association signed a manifesto called the Bicentennial Manifesto, Bicentennial, sorry, Manifesto of Caracas. I want to quote from the document itself the proof that it was signed by these countries. I found this document on the Venezuela government's website. And the article was called Rulers of Alba TCP Signed by Centennial Manifesto of Caracas. And it started off by saying, and I quote, The President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, announced the signing of the Bicentennial Manifesto of Caracas by all heads of state and government members of the Bolivarian Alliance of the Peoples of Our America, Alba. End of quote. So here we see clearly that it was announced by the president of Venezuela, who's also the leader of ALBA, that all heads of state and government members of ALBA signed the Bicentennial Manifesto of Caracas on 19th of April 2010. And then at the end of that article, you have the entire text of the manifesto presented on the internet before us. If you were to go into a search engine such as google.com on the internet and you simply type in Bicentennial Manifesto of Caracas, you will find that one of the links takes you to this article that has the entire text of the manifesto there for anyone to see. And it is found on a web page that, that belongs to the government of Venezuela. Now, in this manifesto, certain things are established, including the fact that ALBA members have agreed to advance on the road to socialism. And in our last program, we showed you what is our concern with that. We showed you, first of all, that we thought it was contempt to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for government leaders to announce that we are going down a road of socialism when on November 25, 2009, the people of this country, 56% of us, clearly stated that we were not in agreement with principles that could make us socialist. And I showed you the connection between the proposed Constitution Bill 2009 and this manifesto and 
this announcement of us going down the road to socialism, I showed you in an article where President Chavez called upon the Queen to give St. Vincent and the Grenadines full independence, that article was published in March of 2010, that he basically acknowledged in that article that what our Prime Minister sought to do with the Constitution Bill was to, quote his words, light up the way forward. And now we are hearing from the same Chavez that Alba is advancing on the road to socialism. And I showed you that it was one and the same thing. And that he, President Chavez, acknowledged that the Constitution Bill was supposed to legally facilitate us going down this road to socialism. But alas, as we know, the bill was killed, thank God, and thank you, Vincentians, for voting no. But yet we hear that we are still advancing on a road to socialism. And now we have a manifesto that entails the details of what we are going to do to go down that road. There are things in there, my dear people, that are of concern to us. And I'm going to just summarize some of them for you to have an idea. You will realize, for example, there's this talk about socialism, but what it is, it's really socialist imperialism. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of talk in the manifesto about the need to move towards true independence, that socialism is the true independence, that we have to fight against the colonialists and the imperialists. But when you examine the manifesto carefully, you will realize that though it claims that the people of Alba, of the countries of Alba, including St. Louis and the Grenadines, must fight against the colonialists, the countries that once colonized us, and must fight against the imperialists, those who wanted to control the world as their empire. Yet in the same manifesto, it shows that Alba's intention is to set up itself as a new empire, a new power in the South. And I will read that to you from the manifesto. You will also see that there are things in there that contradict things that we were told before by our leaders with respect to how far our country's involvement in ALBA would be. For example, we were told it has nothing to do with military association. Yet I will show you in the manifesto that there is evidence of this kind of behavior on the part of ALBA members based on what the manifesto says. We were promised, for example, that we will have nothing to do with the use of the new currency called Sucre. Yet I will prove to you from the manifesto that ALBA has been instructed through certain arms of its organization to pursue the implementation of Sucre. And this is a document that each and every one of the ALBA members have signed. So we will point out these contradictions to you. And one of the things we will also show you is that there is a serious anti-USA sentiment, an anti-USA stance coming out in the manifesto, something that is of grave concern to us at the Institute because we are not aware that our country has any particular war with the United States of America and we are concerned about the kind of statements that are made in this manifesto with respect to Alba's stance and position against America and asking the question, what do we of St. Louis and the Grenadines have to do with that? So we'll point these things out to you as we go through the manifesto. The first thing I want to highlight about it though is the fact that this manifesto acknowledges the work, what they have called the struggle of certain what you call 19th century persons, persons living in the 1800s and so on, who fought against colonialists. And a list and a set of names, and many of them are 19th century Spanish, what you call independentists, persons who fought for the independence of their countries in South America, countries like Peru and Venezuela. We have names like Guaycar, Guaycaipuro, Bolivar, Manuela Saenz, Sucre, we have Tupac Katari and so on. And all these persons are listed in the beginning of the manifesto as persons who have struggled for independence. And the manifesto claims that it is going to complete their work that began 200 years ago and return to the libertarian path or the path of freedom. Now, my concern with this, my dear people, is that this paints a picture as if we 
are not independent, as if we are still struggling for some kind of independence from colonialists, when the truth and the fact is we are no longer a colony of Britain or France. We are an independent country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And while it is true that we can work to become more independent in certain areas, whether it be like the economy and so on,